2015. I'm Rich Folley. This is Tony DiCerlizzi, our guest host for the hour. And we're also here right now with Margie Stoll, who's hey. the author of the Beautiful Creatures book. So many people love those books. Co-author with Cami Co Garcia. Thank you, Cami Garcia, who we also love. But now, with a lot of fanfare and buzz, the Black Widow Forever Red, not the official cover here. No, but no. <laughs> The Black Widow Forever Red book. Welcome, first of all. Thank you. It's yeah. super exciting. I mean, uh, we had a crazy line out at the booth yesterday of people trying to get arcs. So it's every little nerd girl, fangirl dream come true. It is, absolutely. When I talked to Tony, I'm like, who should we bring on? He's like, have you talked to Margie Stoll? Have you seen the new Black Widow book? I was like, I have not. Let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. I was like, because, you know, I mean I, I mean, I think about the Beautiful Creatures books, Supernatural stuff, the casters. Southern Gothic. Yes. And then I started reading this, and it's deep KGB intel. I was blown away. I SBR. really was. <laughs> SBR now come from KGB past. That's but yeah. right. I, well, I'm a... I don't think a lot of people realize because they know the Beautiful Creatures film or they know those books, but I come from a classic fantasy sci-fi background, so I, uh, I made video games for 16 years. Oh my gosh, so your stock's just going yeah. up in my mind. Well, you know, it's weird <laughs> to me. I see the connection, too, between the video games world and the Black Widow. I mean, yeah. because there's this whole thing now with Black Widow finally having her moment. Yeah. And Seal told me that there were people literally crying on the floor because you're finally giving Black Widow the equal treatment that she deserves. The same thing with some oh, of the yeah. conversations happening in the, in the gaming industry. You're sort of crossing both those boundaries. Yeah, uh, an interviewer at EW pushed, uh, said you're put, you as a woman in the industry, you were pushing boundaries. I feel like Natasha does that, you know, yeah. and um, in her industry. Yeah, exactly. And I know, what it, I know what it feels like to be the female Avenger, right? Yeah. That's what it is like. I was the only woman in the, in the bathroom in the games industry, but uh, that's changing. Yeah. And oh my God, I mean, Marvel's killing it with women. That I met Sana Aminat yesterday, who's like a senior editor there. Is it the things they're doing right now with Ms. Marvel and Captain Marvel? Yeah. I mean, even and Thor. Yeah, just yeah, had, yeah. Thor Change. just had her big reveal. Yeah, yeah. It's big a change. great moment for women in comics. Yeah. It's interesting. Do you think the, that um, the films are influencing some of that? So now, as a broader audience. That, that wasn't reading you know, Marvel comics in like the 60s and 70s or seeing them, they're like, wait, wait. Because as I thought about it, I'm like, I don't remember Black Widow. I never read Black Widow comics. I would read girl comics. I loved Red Sonja. I loved uh, I love the Fantastic Four. We don't have girl comics and boy comics. <laughs> we just have comics. It yeah. is, it is changing. So do you think it's changed partly because of the films? I think it's like what happened with uh, the YA industry uh, after the mainstream popularity of you know, fantasy, yeah. where you had J.K. Rowling and you had Stephanie Meyer. And suddenly, Beautiful Creatures was in 50 countries. And that becomes a sort of fantasy isn't a niche anymore, a That's niche right. crowd. Yeah. And we've been going to Comic-Con since it was at the Shrine Auditorium in Tiny, you know, years and years ago. And now it's a mainstream event. And yeah. I think that's... You know, that's the growth you're seeing. But I have a 14, I have three daughters. And I really, they were so excited for me to get this project. And they... Um, are huge Natasha Romanoff fans, yeah. but they're, they show, those are the new reader, you know, yeah. who expect more, who are tough. My kids are fencers. They come armed. Nice. You know, nice. and I think that's what it's like. You know, I think it's the new reader, but it's also the new moviegoer. Yeah. They expect more than a movie. They expect yeah. a book. They expect a deeper dive. So when you get into these characters, which you explore on a surface level for two hours in a movie, they yeah. want to go home and they want to do everything they can with that character. They want the comics, they want the book, yeah. especially if they really like a character. And I yeah. love the fact that they're not thinking about any of this now in terms of one platform or the other. It's all platforms. Well, I think uh, Marvel and Disney really get that. And yeah. I'm, I mean, they, they went out and found the writer who they think would be the best for Star Wars, for you know Marvel projects. They find the video gamer yeah. YA writer. I mean, that's... Did you call they them? Did they call you? How did that all happen? Oh, I've known the um, I've known the Disney people. I've known Marvel people. So I worked on uh, Spider-Man and Fantastic Four as a video game developer. And then I knew the Disney people, and I had a lot of respect for Emily Meehan, who runs. She's the editorial director there, as you know. Yeah. And um, I got this call in Italy from my agent, and I have this crystal clear adrenaline photograph of it as <laughs> like probably the single greatest moment of my life. And I can tell you what I was wearing, eating, where I was standing. <laughs> I, I just freaked out. Yeah. So I felt a lot of responsibility to do right by Natasha. Right. Um, so I, I'm pleased. Sana Amanet at Marvel really put a lot into it too. So it was like a full, you could see the, uh, 
the synergy mm -hmm. with the two editors who just, you know, created this really just kind of mir miraculous kind of movement in between comics and YA, which fits so well together. It's yeah. like the same reader. Yeah, it's interesting. I wonder if we're going to experience, and I was thinking about this as reading it, a huge best-selling author tackling uh, uh, a comic book character, but obviously in this, in this format. I wonder if we're going to start seeing now more comic book characters living and thriving, not in comics, yeah. but in, in novels and, and middle grade novels. What do you think? I think you will. I think that the the industry moves according to demand, and yeah. I know that readers like my own, um, my friends and my kids are are driven to like their their tribe. Yeah. My kid spends so much. My fourteen year old spends so much time on Tumblr. I think she experienced the first Avengers movie in GIFs entirely <laughs> before she actually if saw I it. I string these together. That's yeah. happening, I know. I know. Right? I doing the exact same thing. So it's like, it's part of the currency of her friend group, wow. you know, and it's what means something to her. Right. And also, as sophisticated of a reader as she is, um, she also believes, you know, these are real people to her, even yeah. at 14. Okay, so with, with someone like Natasha, I mean, we were just talking about Hero's Journey. Adam was mentioning how Luke Skywalker was kind of this empty vessel character that it's easy to launch into. Right. What about Natasha, first of all, as, a, as, a, as the author, yeah. did you feel like you saw yourself in her, and do you need that to write a, a successful story? I, don't, I think you, you have to find an emotional place to connect uh, no matter what. I think what you have to write her? the book for yourself no matter what. Yeah. You're always sort of doing that. You have to make it real for you. Natasha is really tough. She is, she's so closed off that that was like the thrill of, you know, getting into Natasha's head, yeah. which is not a POV you're ever going to really find anywhere else. Yeah. But it was terrifying. And yeah. it took a long time. Like it's we, Natasha and I danced around each other <laughs> until I finally was like, let me in, until let me let in. let you in. Yeah. It's kind of dark. It's dark. Her origin story is very dark. Yeah. It, and it's intimidating working on canon, you know, yeah. Natasha Romanoff. She's also been around for 50 years of comics or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, there's a lot to work from. How much of that do you have to, like, be versed in? Or was there teams that helped you kind of kind of help you with the canon as you're writing? Well, I mean, I, I read everything I could get my hands on, just like I did at Fantastic Four and like I did for Spider-Man. But also, I love, I mean, I love comics. So yeah. that was not, that was not a that sacrifice. Was, it was not homework for you. It no, not, it was good it was stuff. Hard to do. And then there's a lot of choosing. That's what happens with fantasy, with your own stuff too. You're like, what, what story do I want to tell? Yeah. Um, and, and then there was a lot of talk with Marvel and with Disney about what's the story we all want to tell. Right. Um, so it was just kind of like, I felt like I had a lot of guides. I felt like the Marvel Universe is great. They're, Marvel has a lot of stewards who know how to sort of protect the universe and what, right. what works for them. Right. As does Disney, and they, they have a huge overlap. Like, their interests are essentially the same, and they, it worked with me and what I wanted to do, which is tell a very human story, tell a very emotional story, yeah. stay character-centered, give a strong girl who, not a sidekick, but a butt-kicker. Yeah, and, um, yeah. Be as real as you can with the world she moves in. Don't pull any punches. You know, you know, know what her weapons and her strategies would be. Get inside her head, and it then show like a different you, side of her. It sounds like you know her so well, and it's you know, it's clearly this adoption process, this dancing yeah. thing has happened. It's, she's part of the family now. Yeah. But um, what's interesting to me too is that the you felt you said earlier how you felt this pressure to make sure you did right by Natasha. And, oh my gosh, it was incredible. And the difference between your own characters and bringing them in the world, and you can make them go whichever direction you want, they're yours. You know, you're like, it's time to go this way now. Yeah. With Natasha, there's another guiding force, and that was, must be really challenging. Yeah, it, it is challenging more because you love the character so much, and you know so many people love her. And I'm one of those fangirls who's like, yeah. more Natasha, more Natasha. So I, I totally understand that. Um, but it's the same way with your own characters. I mean, people come up to me and show me a copy of Beautiful Creatures that they read to each other in the delivery room when she was having the baby that they named after the main character, wow. right? So there, you must get that with Spiderwick and with Wanda and everything. Sometimes. I mean, certainly with Star Wars, <laughs> you, then you, you are as beholden to your readers yeah. in the 50 countries as yeah. you are you know, to Natasha's and fans. And your readers are not shy about letting you know exactly no, no. what they think. <laughs> and certainly the Marvel fans are not shy. About no, them. and you see them online every day. Yeah. I mean, they talk to you, they reach out to you, M stole on Twitter, they find me, 
they tell me exactly what they like and don't like. There is no escaping that. <laughs> what do you think about that sort of differences in fandom between the books? This one has such a built-in massive world yeah. of fandom. You've now stepped right into the middle of it. <laughs> I, world. I, what I like to say is, Star Wars I knew you. I knew yeah. what I was getting into, as I'm sure you did, because yeah. you experienced it first as a fan. That's right. That's right. I mean, so you, you, we you, all stood in those lines. Yeah, you come in. You, there's a reverence, right? You, you, you're excited about it. You want to. You're, you're trying to satisfy the fan girl, the fan boy within yeah. you, and then also the, the 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 author and what can I what can I bring to this and make it give it its make it special. Yes, yeah. and I think Marvel and Disney are good at that. Yes. At finding the the person who will deliver the product that's like kind of yes. worthy of the franchise and who cared about it always. Yes, so yes. I think it's easy for people to assume that because this is big corporations that the people there are callous and uncaring. But it's completely the opposite. Mike Seglane, who was in yeah. charge of overseeing the Star Wars stuff, is a huge Star Wars nerd. Yeah. I'm sure the same can be said for the folks at Marvel. Oh, no, I was in the Marvel offices yesterday and... You know, I try to not act like such an enormous fangirl now that I'm working the with them. business people over there, too. You know, you know. It's a disaster. <laughs> Me trying not to fangirl. That doesn't work? There's like a wall they all take pictures in front of. I was like, that's the wall! <laughs> I mean, I freaked out every five feet. I, that's what you should be doing. That's yeah, awesome. They were like, get it together, man. <laughs> but it was probably, you know, I, all it's all the top five days of my life. It's just been great. And that's... That's what our job should be, not yeah. a job, right? You know? Have you thought about where Black, if, where it's going and, and do you want to stay with Black Widow and do some more of these? I've thought about it all the time. And, I, you know, the, uh, the other thing about working with corporations is you would be shot if you, if yeah. you spilled yeah. any of those secrets so you before. you think about it all the time and we'll take that. As a like human, a, yeah. I think about it all the time. Yeah. Why wouldn't I? Yeah, of course. So that's yeah. All I, can say. I think there's room for more, for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I would read it, write it, live it. Love it. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a fan first and foremost. Yeah, that's awesome. So what about Beautiful Creatures? What's, what's, what's happening with you and, and are you going to do anything more with Cammie and where's, where are you going? Cammie, who I wrote Beautiful Creatures with, my, um, one of my oldest friends and we've worked together since 2009. Mm -hmm. Right now she uh, just went to Macmillan with one of our editors and is sort of setting up a franchise there. So she's busy for a while. I have a lot going on. I have two unannounced projects with Disney. So I'm I'm in the house of mouse for a while. We and love it, the unannounced projects because they're going to be good, but yeah. you can't say anything yeah, about it. Yeah, that's good. You have to wait it out. excitement. So. Yeah, no, it's it's a great time. You know, it's a great time for YA, and I feel like it's a great time for middle grade too. Like we we're moving a lot of books, and it's fun. It is. It is a great time, and I've had a great time with both of you guys, and with Tony for the full hour. It's been really wonderful. Um, and what I love is the energy that I'm feeling all around us yeah. and the fact that you're combining all these things. And when the cover came out for Forever Red, it was wonderful to see that explode through the Internet. And it the did. same is happening with Tony and your books of Star Wars and all the others. It's been great to have you for the hour. And Margie, thanks for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Good job, Tony. Oh, I did it. Yeah. You're a star. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was great. And we'll be back. We're going to be back with more of BookCon 2015. Thanks for joining us for this first hour. Lots more to come.